The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you by Rafter P Construction. Stick around to learn more about Rafter P's design build process and of course, the biggest deer in the world. This week, Deer and Wildlife Stories comes to you from just outside of Houston, Texas at Tejada Whitetails. So I was trying to think of when the first time I ever came to Tejada Whitetails was, and I think it was six years ago. It seems like yesterday though. And uh, the reason why I came out here because there was a buck by the name of Gunslinger. Uh, somebody had posted a picture of Gunslinger on the internet and went, what? I didn't know that there was a deer that looked like that. And I had to come out here and see for myself Gunslinger in person. I'll never forget when I laid eyes on him, I was like, Holy smokes. I mean, this guy is the real deal. He is the entire full package. And I'm thinking, who's this guy, George Tuno? And so over the years, I've gotten to know George really, really good. And anybody that knows George knows that he's a real easy guy to get to know. He, uh, he's very talkative. He's enthusiastic. He is extremely knowledgeable when it comes to pedigrees. And he is passionate about the deer industry. My name is George Tuno of Tejada Whitetails. We're 15 miles south of Houston, right here in Manville, Texas. This is our fifth year of having Keith out here. Really excited to have him out here. But you know, every year it's always a challenge. We hope that we have something good to show him. And I think this year he'll be pretty pleased with what we have. We've got a lot of width for sure. All right, so we are in a yearling pen right now. There's one older buck in here we want to introduce you to. This buck is Texas Jack. So tell everybody about this buck. Well, his pedigree's pretty unique. He's triple crown over Gunslinger's womb, so he doesn't have much of a chance except to be a deer that's gonna throw some pretty good bone. Uh, what's really made him impressive last few years, you know, Texas Jack has never been 30 inches wide, and everything I breathe is 30 inches wide. But what's amazing is everything he throws, he throws the widest deer on the farm. Out of his two-year-olds this year, he has four that broke 30 inches, and two of them broke 34 inches. And we'll wind up showing those two-year-olds to you later on in this show, but the, the cool thing about it is Texas Jack, I mean, look at his right side. I mean, his right side is strong, <laughs> really strong. But the Hotta Whitetails is really known for time length and, and width. And Texas Jack, I mean, what, he's 25 inches, whatever. Yes. But he throws the width. He throws the and that And that's the whole deal as far as genetics go. When you start looking at it, and, and Gunslinger's in there. I mean, just told you about Gunslinger. And, but I'm telling you, Gunslinger gets it done, and that's what I call a legendary deer. He's still alive, and he's getting it done. But again, how old is Texas Jack? Texas Jack is five years old, and at four, he had eight times that broke 14 inches. Kind of put that into perspective on eight times he had 112 inches. And so that's pretty phenomenal. And that's what, that's what he carries that to every deer that he throws. It, it, every deer, as you'll see, they're all 12, 14 inch tines, that, and he throws the width. Yeah. And he's got the paper to back it. Well, you, he, you know how he, I am with pedigree. Look at him. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> he's pretty awesome. Okay, so you got a couple other yearlings in here that are really pretty. I mean, that uh, they're not too big. Which, well, I, I like that. Right. I don't want I don't want to see a yearling that's just over the top big because they develop problems later on. I mean, historically they have for me anyway. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, if I can get a yearling that's pretty clean in the 160 to 190 and still holding that big frame, that's what seems to be the breeders at two. Yeah. Well, that guy right there is going to do it. I promise you. I mean, I with having the pedigrees that you have, and you know, again, a lot of this stuff going back to Gunslinger. I mean, it's just like. He's gonna come on and push. And I like to see these pretty, nice, symmetrical frame, real nice framed yearlings, because at two, that's when they really push up. That is. All right, so when we get back from the break, we're gonna show you some more yearlings, and we're gonna show you what Gunslinger, the old man Gunslinger looks like, and what, he's nine? Nine, yeah, he's nine and a half years old. So don't go anywhere. All right, so here we have some more yearlings, but before we uh, show you these yearlings, we wanna show you the old man, okay? That right there is Gunslinger. And now you can tell, I mean, the Gunslinger is nine years old. And I mean, look at him, he's still looking good though. Still looking good, you know, he's not what he was, once was at four, five, six, and seven. I mean, at nine years old in this industry, that's kind of a legend in itself. He is a legend. I mean, that, and that's, the thing is, Gunslinger has really reshaped our industry. When you think about it, I mean, I, we can go back and I, I wanna pull some clips from deer at my place. 
and the deer at my place that going back to Gunslinger. I mean, Gunslinger throws the whip. He throws beautiful deer. And I mean, look at him. I mean, he, I don't really care what he looks like now. It no. doesn't matter. As long as he's still alive, that's all that matters to me. And, and, and the entire deer breeding industry, he's got over 800 animals in the registry underneath him and no telling how many are not underneath or are out there that are not registered, I should say. But I mean, he is a living legend. And I mean, I, I remember uh, years ago, we come out here and I mean, he loved watermelon. Oh, that deer still does. And I mean, I mean, he's got to be well at, at his heyday. He, I know he was 300 pounds. Oh yeah, 332 pounds when we weighed him that one time, and and it was kind of amazing watching this deer develop, but watching what he's done. Uh, you know, there's several breeder bucks out there which we're very thankful of, and uh, on several different ranches, all the way from Lone Hollow to P Bar to, of course, one that uh, that I love so much. I'm partnered with on. G and K, and there's that, and the list goes on. But what's really made him amazing, two things, is that this year we see it in his does. We didn't really breed him till four, so his does are just old enough to have two-year-olds this year. And the width that you videoed yesterday in the two-year-old pen, it's all gunslinger daughters. I mean, it doesn't matter what we put on top, the daughters drew it, so that was really good. But what's really awesome is that he's nine years old. You know, Jesse James was 10 years old, and we love big deer. We love big two-year-olds. And everybody asks me, why don't you breed two-year-olds as a whole? And I always generally kind of shrug my shoulders. I go to three and older what I try. Now, do I breed some year than Jess? Do I breed some two-year-olds? But if we got to have a deer that's going to live. Yeah, and yeah. Gunslinger's nine, and uh, this breeding season he'll be 10, and he'll get 60 does. We'll see if he makes it through it. Oh, Because oh. we're, we're going to try to make sure that we breed him to the best that we got. And you know, let's hope he holds up. You still got semen on him, right? Oh yeah, yeah. We still have semen on him. As he gets older, we probably won't draw him because we don't want to take that chance. We want to make sure he's here breeding. But yeah, we still have semen on him, and you know, it's getting more and more limited as we go. But like you, you brought out, it's, it's we're very uh, proud and uh, very humbled that so many people do have him in in their pens, and he's not just in their pens, but there's several that are on this segment that their biggest deer out of his daughter's shoe. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, it's a, uh, okay, but you've got some really good yearling bucks in here too. I mean, nothing too crazy giant, which I like, but stuff in here that's gonna be blow up at two for sure. Yes, one combination we saw that we really, really liked, and so far, you know, of course they're yearlings, mm -hmm. but when you start looking at the width and the spread, those are blackjack over gunslinger, as some of them, uh, 30 below, over Gunslinger Daughters, again, uh, is something that, that really stands out to us. Those two sires have done really well, along with our own sires as well. But Blackjack over Gunslinger, seems like it might just hit a home run. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not a betting man, but if I was a betting man, I'd say absolutely, that's where I'm gonna put my money. Well, you're also partners on a deer that everybody's talking about by the name of Get Rhythm. Tell me about him. Really awesome deer. We're partnered with Ken Slout and Denise Slout out there at Rockin' S Whitetails. We also are partnered with Brad Hasek on that deer as well as SNS Whitetails galore. All right, so what's his pedigree? Pedigree is blackjack, horsepower, cardiac kid, big guy over sudden impacts, womb sister. Here's the interesting part about that, Keith. Six sires I named there, counting sudden impact. Every one of those deer has earned over a million dollars. Wow. Okay, so if somebody wants more information about coming out to Tejada Whitetails, they're just outside of Manville, Texas, which is kind of outside of Houston. Give them a phone number. 832-622-2571. When we get back, we'll be taking a look at some two-year-olds. All right, so these are Tejada Whitetail two-year-olds right here. And these are two-year-olds with some power. I cannot get over this, George. I mean, it's like every time I come look at your two-year-olds, it's like, wow. I mean, these are these are some nice deer. Uh, are you, any of these in here ones that you want to breed with? Uh, there's one, a long bean deer over there. He's double a fonda. Uh, what really number is he? 204, yep, definitely 204. I got him. That's a nice looking deer now. What caught my eye was the long beans. He twisted them. He banged them early on yeah. the feed trough. Uh, but if you look, his G5 is like seven, eight inches, but it's rolled in but he's got 32 inch long beams, so that makes a big difference. He's pretty, and he's got the paper to go with it. Yeah, well, okay, so 
you will breed with him. I will breed with him. We but have it's just a backup him. breeder. Just a backup breeder. Okay. I want to ask you a question. How has the embryo program helped your business model? It's helped us immensely. What we did with the embryos, we never bred them to like create a bunch and then sell them. That wasn't ever our motto. Our motto was if we embryoed it, we bred it to keep it. Our goal was whether it was backup buck or whether it was the AI, was to end up with two does per doe, or two doe fawns per doe. Now people say, well, you know, I've got twin does, I've got trip does, that's true. But if you can average two, you can push your program that much faster. And we bred our best, so obviously we kept them here on the farm. Okay, so a lot of people wind up doing that and they wind up selling them. Mm -hmm. But I, I think the way that you protect the deer and you protect your investment is you hold them tight and you keep them on the farm. You keep them on the farm and you also make sure that you don't you don't produce too many of them. You know, if a girl gives you more embryos than you need, you don't put them all in there just because she's a good one. Maybe from a business standpoint, it'd be wise to because she's hot, you can sell more babies, whatever the case. But all you do is kill that line. Okay. And so we try very hard to protect our customer. You know, if a man comes out here and spends 10,000 or whether he spends $100,000 on a deer, you've got to protect that person. You can't go out and flood the market. I mean, they've got to get their money back. And at the end of the day, every customer you deal with, your goal should be that they get their investment back and make a profit. It's important if you're a deer breeder or going to get in the deer breeding market, I always think you ought to talk about embryos. I mean, how many of these deer are embryoed and what is the plan? I mean, because if they're going to just mass produce a deer that is a beautiful, valuable deer, then all of a sudden it's going to be supply and demand. You're going to have too many of those out there and the value is going to go down. NADAR is an extremely critical tool for any deer breeder to try to get a value on an animal. And you'll be able to see if somebody's kind of pulling some shenanigans on you. Because I just believe in full disclosure. Yeah. Okay, if, if there's brothers or sisters to a deer, then you, the buyer ought to be made aware of that. Yeah, and, and, and they are with, with nature. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of brothers and sisters that if they end up in the pasture, it doesn't really matter. But if they end up competing against you, it does. All right, so is that buck right there magnitude? Yes, it is. Okay, so tell everybody who magnitude is. Magnitude is Earthquake's full brother. And, and Earthquake was a stud. He was just, back in, in his time, he was the biggest one at that time. Unfortunately, dogs ran him into a fence and killed him. What's really amazing about Magnitude, he hadn't got bred a lot, but what he, where he has gotten bred, you see the deer that he's producing are just phenomenal. And Magnitude, as you can see this year, he's narrowed up, but his widest, he was 41 inches. Yeah, last year we filmed him, I know that. Okay, when we get back, we're gonna to talk to some deer breeders that have dealt with Tejada Whitetails and hear what they have to say about their business dealings. And then we'll show you a buck named Laredo. I'm Billy Sage with s and Whitetail Galore, Logan, Ohio. One of our partners that we really enjoyed over the years, done quite a few partnerships uh, in the past. George, is, he's just a really hard worker, pushes the product. He knows the business inside and out. Just a great guy to do partnership with. And we just feel like it moves us forward when we get a good partner on a great animal. And George is one of those guys. My name is Jeff Madison. I'm the owner of Texas Mad Bucks Trophy Deer Ranch. We're a family-owned deer breeding operation. Yeah, George Snall, just a great guy. When we first got involved in the industry, I got, was introduced to George. We started buying some deer from him. What you get with George is exactly what you see, just a straightforward, honest man. Not only does he breed incredibly uh, beautiful whitetail, but just the commitment he has to help people that have partnered with him, bought deer from him. He wants to see us succeed just as much as he wants to see his animals succeed. And of all the people that are willing to put a hand out and help you when you need it, George is right there at the top. And it's been a, just an absolute blessing to get to work with George and be able to uh, help with breed with his deer, buy deer from him, and just become a good family friend. All right, so here's some more two-year-olds, and there's a buck in here, and his name is Laredo, and is he two? He's two. Holy smokes, how wide is he, George? A 33 and a half, and unfortunately, I know that exactly because we had to test him. Which means? Which tell. means that, that whenever well, we test to release to the pasture, he wasn't supposed to be tested, but the dart accidentally ended up in him, so we went ahead and tested him while he was okay. on the ground. And what it is, live testing for chronic wasting disease. Right. And so before we can move any deer now in the state of Texas to be released, 
they all have to be tested for CWD, and of course, that's you know, it's it's hard on the deer. And to see what these deer have done since that testing, I mean, we all thought that it was going to really knock them back. Could you imagine if it didn't knock them back, how big Laredo would be? Yes, that's we kind of we kind of wondered at ourselves. Or these other two-year-olds in here. So, tell everybody where these deer are going to go. Laredo will stay here. The rest of these deer will be heading to ranches. In fact, we have like 30 some deer that we're double tagging, mm -hmm. and the reason we double tag them is they don't want them to get shot on accident. In other okay. words, they want them to go out and they want them to breed for a few years. And so we've got one ranch that we're taking 14 to one pasture and 13 to another to help his breeding. Did another pasture for him five years ago and he literally has some deer that were raised in his pasture. They're 270, 280. Those All because of genetics. All because of genetics. All because of genetics. And the customers that deal with you, I hear over and over and over again, you stand behind what you do. Not just great customer service, but with a warranty. A warranty in the deer business? Are you kidding me? Because there's a lot of guys, those deer come off the trailer and they're yours, baby. You know, it's like, that doesn't happen with George Tunnel. Well, the problem that you have with that uh, attitude is that, you know, you're probably never gonna sell to that customer again for right. one. That's not what deer business is about. The deer business is about everybody should make money. Not just the guy that sells a deer the first time, but the guy that sells a deer the second time. The guy that builds his program better. Whatever the case is, everybody needs to make a profit to stay in the business. And if somebody doesn't, that's a deer farmer you lose, and that's something that we just can't afford. If somebody wants more information about coming out here, give them a phone number. 832-622-2571. We'll have a direct link off of our website over to George's site, and uh, you gotta get out here early enough before they all ship out, because these guys right here, they'll be shipped out by the, within the next few days, I'll put it that way. Well, 13 of them will be on the trailer tonight. Yeah, so you gotta call George and make an appointment to come out here. Okay, if you're watching online, you got questions or comments, you know what to do. Go ahead and post them below. If you're not watching online, head on over to YouTube and hit the Deer Farming channel where you can watch all of our shows 24-7. Heck, you can binge watch them. My name is Keith Warren. I want to thank you all for watching. Thanks for having us out, man. Thank you for being here. You're awesome. I mean, I love coming out here and I love seeing my man Gunslinger. <laughs> and the like, living legend. I kind of like seeing him every year too. Okay, so you've got property and you're wanting to build. Maybe a barn dominium, maybe deer facilities, or maybe a badass lodge. Well, you've got to check out Rafter P Construction. Rafter P Construction is the leading design build contractor across the state of Texas. Specializing in quality farm and ranch design build projects, Rafter P Construction encourages their customers to be very hands-on, incorporating your input into every aspect of your project with their in-house design teams. The goal of Rafter P Construction is to be your builder for life. Rafter P Construction, they'll be with you every step of the way to build your dream project. All the while, keeping quality and customer satisfaction at the forefront.